but the boat was already a considerable distance from the land. Buffeted by the waves, because of the wind, was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, it's a ghost, they said, and cried out and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and, and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? May the Lord bless his reading, because it is holy. Our theme today, as I have said, reads, keep the focus. Re keep the focus. Um, this is more than, a, it's, it's more of an encouragement or an exhortation to the Church of God to keep believing and trusting in the Lord, to have faith in the Lord. Obviously, how do you ask somebody to have faith in something when they do not have knowledge or understanding about this Jesus? But I'm happy today because I know that my brothers and sisters, you are all children of God and we know even from the scriptures that we have been hearing for the past few weeks, uh, they've been teaching us, giving us understanding on who this Jesus is. My message therefore today is aimed at reminding each other and encouraging each other that in these um, turbulent times that we are living, um, there is a God up there who loves us and who forgives us. The times that we are living in, brothers and sisters, is full of uncertainty and full of despondency. The people do not even know whether they are coming or going. Let me take you to John 3 verse 16, which says that, For God so loved the world, that he gave us his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. This Jesus that I am talking about, whom God sent to us, brought light into, into, into this world. And by bringing light, he also brought love, forgiveness, and salvation. It is because of this unwavering love from our God that I exhort you to keep focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord who has been tried, tested, and proved. The Lord whom we all know that he is the beginning and the end. The Lord who was, the Lord who is, and the Lord who forever will be. The Lord who holds even our future. The Lord who makes a way where there is no way. He is the King of Kings, the omnipotent God the sovereign God, the Lord who lifts us up when we fall and he renews our, our, our strength. This Lord is also talked about in Numbers 23 where they say God is not a man that he should lie, neither is he a son of man that he should repent. He has blessed and I cannot reverse it. So my brothers and sisters, we seem to have no choice but to put our focus on this awesome God. This morning we read uh, about Peter, who put his trust on Jesus Christ, the, this Jesus Christ that I've just been describing. And like Jesus, the moment he put his trust on him, he managed to walk on water. But unfortunately, before time, before he even knew it, Peter had turned to the wind, and the moment he did that, he was about to sink. 
Peter remembered his father and he cried out for help. He cried out, he cried out, he said, Lord, please save me. And we read from the book that Jesus immediately gave him his hand. This shows us, uh, my brothers and sisters, that this Lord is a covenant keeping God. What he has promised, he will fulfill on our behalf. There are certain scriptural, scriptural lessons that I have taken from this passage that I would like to, to, to share with you this morning. From, from the scripture, Jesus had just performed a miracle. If you were to read a few passages before, he had just um, performed a miracle where he had fed about 5,000 people. Now, he was about to perform another miracle in front of the disciples. So Jesus deliberately asked the disciples to go ahead before him. So I will be listing these seven um, lessons um, which, which I've taken from this, uh, from this scripture. The first one uh, is purpose. Jesus uh, had a mission when he was uh, moving around with his uh, disciples. We all know that Jesus' mission when he came down to earth was to redeem the children of us, to redeem us from our bondages. So Jesus made sure that he followed his purpose. That was the reason why Jesus asked the disciples to go ahead in front of him and he, he did not even relent even when he, he met with, with so many obstacles while he was here. On this, uh, I've just got a question for, for you, my brothers and sisters. Do we all know what our purposes are as children of God? Jesus knew his purpose and he went through his purpose until he conquered death and he is now sitting at the right hand of his father. The second uh, aspect that I saw on this passage is that of mentoring. Jesus came to, when he was with his disciples, he was mentoring them and coaching them about the kingdom of God. And even the people that were around him, he was mentoring them as well. So he had just performed a miracle. And this miracle of walking off on the water, he was showing the disciples that if you live in the kingdom of God and if you keep your focus on God, you, you will pe perform miracles. And in the kingdom of God, there are miracles that are performed. The third aspect is about prayer. Jesus kept his focus on God. Before he performed this miracle, he went up the mountain to pray, meaning that he knew that he did nothing before his father, before praying to his father. He had to seek the face of his father before he could do anything on this earth. This is teaching us, uh, my brothers and sisters, that prayer is a necessity in the kingdom of God. It is a necessity on this earth as children of God if we are to conquer the world. So we need to focus on prayer. We need to focus on our God through prayer as well. Number four is about obedience. Jesus obeyed his father despite all the problems that he found on this earth. Peter also, he obeyed his, um, he obeyed his Lord Jesus Christ. When he asked him, and Jesus said, come, and he, he followed this, uh, this instruction that Jesus had given him. And we all saw that he went out on the water and he walked towards his Lord because he was focusing on Jesus Christ. So obedience is also key in the kingdom of God. The fifth one that I've noticed is about battles. There are battles in the kingdom of God. This is why Jesus at one time said that since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffers violence. So as children of God, we will face battles, just like Peter. There was a battle which came to him through the wind and that obstructed him. The moment he looked at the, at the battle, without
without forcing, focusing on Jesus Christ, he was already sick. So when it comes to, to faith in Jesus Christ, there should be no doubt. And we should always focus on him and not on what is surrounding us. The sixth aspect is on repentance. When Peter realized that he had swayed away from the Lord, he cried out for help. He cried out, and as we have seen that Jesus Christ uh, is ready to forgive, Jesus Christ forgave him in no time. So it is important to realize that when we fall, we should always be able to keep to pick ourselves up in faith. The seventh one is that of love, compassion, and salvation. The verse 41 of this passage says, Jesus reached out his hand and saved him, meaning God is ready and available to forgive us whenever we call back on him and ask for forgiveness. My brothers and sisters, the devil will always wage war against the believers of God. He did this to Peter and he planted doubt in, P in Peter's mind. The devil did the same to Joseph. The devil was fighting uh, Joseph's identity and his destiny. Joseph had a destiny which he was given by the Lord. His father loved him and uh, the brothers hated him for that. He was also blessed to be given dreams by, by the Lord and the brothers even hated him more. So sometimes we don't fall because of our own selves. Sometimes it is our surroundings that make us fall. Joseph was thrown into the pit by his brothers. So he fell not because of himself, but because of his brothers. So it is important to watch on our relationships. Joseph knew that uh, the Lord would still bless him despite uh, even the opinions of his brothers. That is why he did not even fight back. He did not uh, even refuse to go uh, when he was sent by his father. He, continues on, he continued on his mission, just like Jesus Christ did. On, on this one, I would like just to encourage you to say that when the Lord has promised something to his children, he will be fulfill that promise despite what is around you. So be encouraged, children of God, to keep focus on this God. Also, Joseph was only 17 when he was given this uh, gift of dreams. This shows that God also loves our, our, young, uh, our young people, our, our sons and daughters. So we should encourage our daughters and sons to commit themselves also to God and to keep focused on Jesus Christ. In the walk to your destiny, God may allow thorns in your path. The same thorns that we have read about, that Peter fought and also Joseph. But in, when, you, when you find these thorns in your journey, it is best to keep focused on Jesus Christ because he is the one that will give you strength to pull through and at the end, you will conquer. Some may be asking, where is God during this pandemic? Where is your God when all, has, when all hell has been endless? Everyone, all nations, big and small, they are suffering from this pandemic. Companies are closing down. There is no medication in hospitals. People are not sure what to do. I would like to say, let us focus on God. Let us focus on the promises that uh, the Lord has given us. Let us also focus on the purposes that we have on this, uh, what that God has taught us. Let us focus on Jesus Christ. Let us keep the focus. Let us fight the good fight of faith. It is not by might nor by power that we conquer the world. But let us realize that it is by faith that we obtain righteousness. From the passage that we read in Romans 10, which talks about confession of faith, we realize that some of God's promises, their voice activated. 
the Lord reminds us in Jeremiah 31, verse 33, when he says, Behold, I will put my law in, in their minds, and I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. So this is the reason why God says he searches their heart, because he knows that the word is near us. It is with us. I urge you, brothers and sisters, that we remain steadfast in faith, knowing that the word is near us, and it is in our mouth and heart, and that when we, when we confess this word, that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. May the good Lord bless his word. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your word that you graciously gave us this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you will watch your word to perform it in our lives. We thank you because we know that you are a faithful God. You will open our hearts, you will open our eyes and our ears that we will be able to hear your word. For your word says that faith comes by hearing the word and hearing by the word of God. Lord, we thank you. May you keep us as we go during this week. May you remind us of the word that we have heard this morning. May you guide us and guard us from the snares of this world. We thank you, Father, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters, join me in praising the Lord as we sing this chorus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The Yeah.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, rest and abide in us. Amen.